All right, so you're being recorded now, so. Okay, um, this is the Disability Access Advisory Committee meeting on January 10, 2023, and we're starting 1154. Um, okay, so um, I know that our full committee is here. If you want to announce yourselves quickly, that would be good. Elise, I guess that's not I'm Tori and I'm here by phone. And Marty Smith is here. Marty and Sarah Darren is here. And Sarah and Darren is here. Yes, she is. Okay, cool. All right, we're going to have to cut things out of this agenda. So what I what I suggest we cut is the discussion of becoming a commission. Um, I'm working on that. Um, I think what we need to do is Chris Brestroff here. Yes. I'm yes. Here. Cool. Okay. Yay. Um, what we need to do is hear about the um, the two. Uh, projects because one of them is nearing that um, critical stage, which is Pomeroy, and they're in the earlier stage, I believe, with the uh, North Common. So we need to hear about both of those, and we need to talk about the snow and ice removal bylaw. And I know that two of you also went to the TAC meeting last week, so I think it would be great to talk about that. And hopefully in this conversation, something will emerge about the $50,000 capital Although, um, yeah, if we could just get proposals for that from different committees, uh, from different town departments, that would be great. But Chris, you have stuff to tell us, I think. I right? do. And I okay. have my, um, my uh, friend and colleague, Pamela Field Sadler here, and she's going to help me share um, some drawings because I'm not competent at doing that <laughs> Okay, welcome, um, Pam. I'm not competent at reading drawing, so I'll be good. <laughs> okay. So um, I'm here to talk about the North Common Project. I'm not as conversant about the Pomeroy Village um, Interchange Project or Intersection Project, and I had suggested that Guilford be um, invited to a meeting to talk to you about that. If you want to show a, a drawing of it, and I'm still here in the meeting, I can talk about it, but I am not as conversant as Guilford is. So why don't we start off with North Common and see, yes. see how Thank far you. we get. Okay, so Pam Field Sadler, can you share um, the plan that is called a concept plan? Can you just tell us which what what percentage stage of development this is, do you think? This is pretty far along. This is going okay. into construction drawings. I believe that Guilford Mooring, the uh, superintendent of public works, intends to put this out to bid uh, either January or February. Oh, wow. So very soon. Okay. Um, he doesn't have a full set of construction drawings yet that he has shown to me, but um, we have a conceptual plan and then we have a rendering. So, um, okay, we should have heard about this before. Okay, hopefully well, we, all right, what, uh, let's go on with it. Yeah. Chris, I'm, I am, I'm having difficulty here. Why I, I'm not seeing my screen. Shoot. Let me see if I can share a screen. Who knows, maybe I could actually do it for once. Let's see. <laughs> so Chris, I think I have them um, on, uh, as well, if you'll tell, is this the, which drawing is it of the two that you sent me that you want to share? The one that's labeled concept. Okay. Let me, I, I will also attempt to, to share. And um, while I'm unmuted, I'll just say that Guilford had another meeting, but he's hoping to join this meeting later on. He did receive an invitation. Oh, mm -hmm. oh we got it. it looks like, yeah. yeah. Right. All right. Okay. Good. Okay, so um, this is the latest concept plan for the North Common Project. The North Common Project has been um, in conversation, being worked on uh, since 2013. So it's now been 10 years that we've been working on this project. Um, the town council did approve a plan, um, which is virtually what you're looking at now, to um, take away the parking garage parking lot in front of town hall and turn it into a green lawn area um, and then combine that with the plaza area in front of town hall to provide a really expansive gathering space so that's something that the town council has um, voted on and has agreed to um, essentially what we're doing here is we're renovating the north common which hasn't been renovated since the 1960s 
And there, as you know, there are all kinds of problems with um, lack of uh, accessibility, um, drainage issues. Um, some of the materials that are out there are very um, dilapidated and deteriorated, such as the tree, the boxes around the trees, and some of the trees also are um, on their way out. So they're not doing as well as we would have hoped. And the tree warden has looked at all the trees. So I'll walk you through um, what's being proposed here. And it's not different in concept from what you saw. You probably saw this about a year ago. It's been kind of a slow go getting to this stage, but we wanted to make sure that you had a chance to see this and comment on it. So essentially, um, the big things that are happening are, number one, we're taking away that parking lot in front of Town Hall and we're turning it into a, a lawn and uh, green area for people to gather for events or just for passive recreation. We're making the, um, the roadway in front of Town Hall that also goes past the Grace Church uh, one way southbound, so you'll no longer be able to drive north on that portion of Boltwood Avenue. You can only drive south. You turn in from Main Street and you drive south. Once you get to um, Spring Street, it's going to be two ways again, but in front of Town Hall and Grace Church, it will just be one way south. Um, the re one of the reasons for that was to eliminate the am amount of traffic and the speeding of traffic in front of town hall, because we want to have this be kind of a pedestrian or, you know, a place where people can gather and we don't want to have cars zooming through here. So by having one way traffic, we thought we could control this, uh, the amount of traffic. Um, the second thing is we wanted to be able to replace some of the car space, the parking spaces that are um, eliminated from this big parking lot in front of town hall. We wanted to be able to replace them somehow. So we've added, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14. So we've added 14 parallel parking spaces along Boltwood Ave. And those would be um, accessible via driving south along Boltwood Ave. On the west side? There are some on the west side and some on the east side. Ah, okay. There's, okay. Um, there's one van accessible parking space on the west side and one regular um, accessible parking space on the east side. And those both have access uh, aisles that someone can disembark from the vehicle um, and gain access to the rest of the North Common. Um, let's see, the grade of the Boltwood Avenue as it goes south is a little bit over 4%, but we're trying to keep the grades right in front of Town Hall and where the uh, handicap parking is to less than 2%. So, um, so that would be of interest to you. The walkways, we have uh, walkways crisscrossing um, the North Common and they've been designed to be all less than 5%. So some of them are as much as 4.75%, but they're less steep than what is there now. Um, so that all of the North Common would then be accessible to someone in a wheelchair. Um, I'm sorry, Chris, can you tell me where the walkways are? Are they around the perimeter? And then, no, then is, where do they go? There is a walkway on the east side along Boltwood Avenue that's, I believe, a six foot wide um, sidewalk, essentially. Right. And, and then on the west side, um, we've expanded the walk, the sidewalk along South Pleasant Street. So I think it's an eight foot sidewalk there. So um, then we also have a walkway that starts at the northwest corner and comes down to a middle point and then extends to the southeast corner. And then we have another walkway that starts at the southwest corner and goes north um, towards the plaza, which would be in front of Town Hall. So essentially it's, it's, it's almost like a cross, but then there's a, a kind of a gathering space in the middle with, um, with chairs and tables. Where's the bus stop? The bus stop is on the north side. Um, the bus stop is essentially where it is now. 
and there would be a bus shelter, but the bus shelter, rather than being parallel with Main Street, is going to be perpendicular with Main Street. And there will also be an expanded um, walkway up there. It's, it'll be wider, and there will be more um, seating spaces provided, and some trees that are planted in the ground, not in um, elevated boxes. So the trees will be there for you know, time to come. There won't be, you know, just there temporarily. Okay, so I just, I just misunderstand. The bus stop on the... North side. South side. I'm talking about the south side one. There, yeah. There is a bus stop that is... The one that goes toward the east, where the bus goes toward the east. Oh, that's on the north side. It's on the north side. It's on the south side of Main Street, but it's the north yeah. side of the North Common. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. That yeah. Will, Where is that one? That, that will will terrible. Rem remain in the same place. And it has walkways to it? Yes. Mm, bad ones. That's the question. Bad ones. Go, said go for it, Elise. <laughs> That's my main bitch, is that walking, that sidewalk is terrible. Mm -hmm. It's yep. cracked. It's it's in bad condition. Just, and so just we're, we're going to be replacing that sidewalk that's there now. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah, that'll be a new. And sidewalk. there won't be any meters and stuff in the middle of it because there's no parking. No. So you'll be able no to get. You'll be able to go. So you'll be able to go from Town Hall to South Pleasant Street along the side of the Common on a sidewalk. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. That's what I. Okay, that's what I need to know. And there Me aren't going to be any obstructions in the middle of it for people who have, because like now you can't even use that with a wheelchair. There's too many obstructions and it's too. There is a clear route. There will be a bike share station um, about, <laughs> about at the same uh, horizontal space as the bus stop. In other words, the bus stop will be on Main Street. And then on the opposite side of the sidewalk, there will be a bike share station. But there mm. is ample space between the bike share and um, the benches and trees on the north side to have a passageway. It looks like it's probably about five feet wide. And one quick question. I'm sorry, it's Elise. Um, if you're having a bike share right near the bus stop, uh, are, are people waiting for the bus going to get hit by bicyclists coming to and from? No. No, they're not allowed to ride okay. on the sidewalk in downtown. Well, people do it. Maybe they do it, but that's against oh, yeah. the law. I know, but I've gotten hit. I almost got hit several times. I'm just letting you know that mm -hmm. that could be a issue. Yeah. One of the okay. reasons for having a bike share near the bus stop is the thought is that someone can ride the bus to this location and then mm -hmm. take one of the bikes in the bike share and walk and derive, ride it to a place that is not accessible by bus. So that's kind of extending the you know, public transportation of the area. Yeah, yeah um, there's a good logic to it. It's just the, the logic is good. The question is, the question is how safe is the juxtaposition of those two. Marty, do you wanna, you have an idea? It looks like, um, I think it'll work. The, what they've done is they've put a, a, I don't know how to explain this, between the bike share and the bus drop off, there is, what looks to be about five feet by, I don't know how many feet that is, Chris. Looks like it could be 40 or 50 feet with three areas for trees, three five by five sections for trees with adjacent benches. And so this, this sort of tree planting and bench area is separating standing and waiting for the bus and the bike share, mm. if that uh -huh. makes sense. Yeah, so that's about 40 feet wide, you think? Um, the bike share itself, I think, is 40 feet long. If the, so then, if the bike fair share is 40 feet long, then this planter area is close to 80, or mm -hmm. at least 60. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, so there but isn't a direct juxtaposition. There's really quite a separation. Yeah, I think there is. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. a relief. 
Okay. <laughs> Elise and I hear bikes and we go, oh God. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, I mean, yeah. 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 Um, so yeah. may I say one thing? <laughs> um, there is a walkway that goes from the bike, from the bus stop to town hall. And that particular walkway is going to be a little bit steeper than the other walkways in the North Common. It's going to be, I think, 6%, but there will be a handrail all along one side. And it is 6% because it, it follows the grade of the roadway that's just north of it. Um, but we did accommodate um, people by putting in a handrail there. And then at the East end of that is a ramp going down to the plaza. A ramp, how does that work? like a, do, a curb cut, a curb cut ramp. How does that work for you, Sarah and Tori? I, I'm i not uh, quite clear on what we're talking about. Like, for example, somebody disabled parks on the west side of that, uh, the old place and then is trying to go up the hill, say they need to go and stop at Bank of America. Is that the one they are going to use that route with the rails? They yes. could use a route that would go into the plaza and then turn left and go along the walkway that's what, 4.7% and then um, turn right and go <clears throat> up to the northern walkway and then cross over to the Bank of America. So that's one route that would be less than 6%. Or a person could get out of the car in the space that you talked about, Saren, and yeah. cross the plaza and then go to the um, to, to this walkway that I described as being 6% that has the handrail along it and take that um, walkway up towards uh, the northwest corner of this North Common and cross over yeah. to the Bank of America. So there are two yeah. routes. One is steeper than the other. One is longer than the yeah, other. Yeah, so it is going to make it much more cumbersome. Before, um, I remember we used to park right across from Bank of America on the Common and then just go very easily across the street to Bank of America, for example. But now that is not going to be there. So it's. Well, Bank of America does have spaces behind oh, the building I know, I know. that but are. I'm just accessible. telling Bank of America, mm -hmm. it could be a fresh side mm -hmm. or it could be the old Hastings, you know, mm -hmm. to get on the other side of the street. So, which was, we really use those HP spots on the town common. So now they are no longer there. And the other alternative is a steeper route. Well, so I guess you win some and you lose some, right? I'd like to ask a couple of things. One is yes. you did a good job in solving the accessible parking spaces um, because originally you had the van space opening into the street, which was right. not good. Um, right. You still haven't solved the issue of there is no path that is accessible from any accessible parking to the town hall. Yes. That's one of the major problems that still needs to be addressed. You cannot get from any of the accessible parking to the accessible entrance to the to town hall. The, one, the parking spaces in the back are actually islanded. There is no accessible way from those parking spaces. So you can't get to the street even legally on those because there's no sidewalk, there's no path that's safe and separated from the ve vehicular traffic. Many months ago, we sent a letter about this project and I believe Marty, um, and it, I know it was in the letter, talked about a bump out of some kind of a bump out. I forget what it's called, Marty, that needed oh, to be a loading on, zone. on Main Street. Yeah, so there needs that, to be a loading zone adjacent to the, the north entrance to town hall. And we put that in the, the letter code, a while yeah, ago. The code requires 
either accessible parking with an accessible path or alternatively, you can put a loading zone. But right now, none of it's accessible. The other thing I'd like to say, I agree with Saren on the lack of a location of an accessible space on the northwest corner. Yep. That is a real, I mean, I've been by yeah. there and I've watched that yeah. space a lot and it's almost always full. It's almost yeah. always used. It's yeah. used more than the one that's on the east side. I would and recommend it as part of this project that you make the first parallel parking space on South Pleasant Street on the common side, an accessible parking space. Van accessible. Van accessible, yes. Van accessible. So Very it'll be important. on the right side for a van. You're going to have to adjust the sidewalk a little bit. Yeah. But I think you need to do that. Yeah, because, because there it, just is no center accessible parking until you go all the way across to the library. Yep. Yes. And yes. I have to say, it's too bad that Bank of America has two accessible parking spaces because you can't leave your vehicle there unless you're at Bank of America. It's not like right. it's it's not accessible parking for people who are just going downtown. Yes. So um, I'm I'm sort of standing in for the DPW who really did this design. Um, yep. And Clearly. what I know is that um, there is a bike path, bike bike lane, I guess it is, that goes north along South Pleasant Street, along the east side of South Pleasant Street. So I'm wondering um, how that might be compatible with or not compatible with a handicapped parking space up It shouldn't that. bother it at yeah. all because you've already got parking spaces there. Mm -hmm. You just need to okay. take one, the first of those spaces and make a, a loading area. So you're going to mm -hmm. have to widen the sidewalk at that point, just like that was done on, on the, the other side, side just mm -hmm. like right. on the east side. Mm -hmm. OK, I will talk. I will talk to the DPW about that. It's a critical. Um, do we uh, we need a motion? Somebody make a motion because this is a really critical issue. We yeah. are moving some really useful um, handicap parking and yeah. not replacing it. And this is sort of why we got involved in this in the first place. And I'm yeah. sorry to say that it was not considered. So we need a motion. And I think uh, I wish Pat DeAngelis was here because I think the town council needs to insist on this. Um, so a motion to the town council might be useful to the town council regarding this. Who's going to make it? I'll make, I'll a, make motion. a motion. OK, go ahead. As Mark. the committee makes a motion to the town council, um to replace the um existing northwest accessible parking space on the west side of the common as close to the to main street as possible so it'd be the first space for van accessible okay so um, Pamela, are you able to take notes about this? Pamela Young? Yes, I am taking notes. Okay, doing my okay. best. Yep. So. There's two Pamelas. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. taking notes right. too. So. Right. <laughs> okay. Not so many Pamelas to have two in one room. It's almost like having two Myras. Um, <laughs> not, not as bad. Okay. Um, so um, I, we have a motion to replace the Northwest common parking uh, handicap parking space with another one and and this is a motion i hope to uh, what's the word that you use the verb you use for the town council that would be at the beginning of the motion so that they get the motion so recommendation okay. from okay recommend to the town council that they replace 
Okay. That they replicate the space. Right. At the northwest corner of the common. Yes. Okay. We have a second. I'll second, Elise. I'll second that. Okay. All right. Sorry. So we need a vote. Marty? Yes. Elise? Yes. Tori? Yes. Saren? Yes. And me? Yes. Okay. So we're five to zero on that. Right. And I, I think we've taken a bunch of votes in the past. This is a really, really, really important yes. issue. Yes. And, um, and this is why we needed to have been approached earlier. We can't yes. be told that this is too late in the process. This has to be done because it really does compromise quality of life and accessibility to, in, to, to the town for a number of people. Um, and yes. so I think it's a really critical issue. Not everything we do is as critical as this, but I, somebody needs to hear it. Um, um, okay, go ahead. I just want ahead. to make sure that the wordage in there includes the van accessible, like Marty said, yep. van accessible speak. Yep. Okay. Um, all right. So do we have any other questions or concerns about the the um, about the the uh, the plan well a uh, 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 marty raised a concern like if the handicapped parking places is on the um west side then there has to be walkways safe walkways to take the person across the street to reach the town hall so let me explain how that works. Um, there's the van accessible unloading area, that's the striped area, and then there's a walkway or a sidewalk right next to that. And that's what, I'm, what someone's pointing at now. And then um, that would lead right into the plaza, which is uh, level with that walkway. And the plaza um, is, uh, has a has a crosswalk at the top of it, at the northern end of it, that um, would lead someone across the road to the sidewalk, and then from there you can get to the north um, entry to town hall. So if you went north from where that arrow is, the Christine, steps you, you can't. Steps, you, you couldn't do the steps, but you you could, can't do it. Can't do because. It the the grading between the corner the northwest corner of town hall down to the entry plaza for the town hall is too steep unless you yeah. put a ramp there that's why i say there is no accessible entrance to town hall as it currently stands yes so marty I, would would you if you go down the ramp, then you end up on the landing area. There is a ramp. You, there is a ramp. There's a curb cut, a curb cut going north. And I see what you're saying, that there's nowhere that you can kind of land. There's no five foot by five foot landing space up there that you could then make a right and go um, to the accessible place into the northern entrance to town hall. There's, it's not um, easily navigable. And we've actually been complaining about that, but DPW yeah. has felt that this scenario seems to work best for their plan. But I understand what you're saying. It works for their saying. plan. Yeah. That's but it doesn't I work. Christine, <laughs> but it's the time Christine, doesn't work, you know. Christine, that's what I have to come back and say to you. Is yep. we've been tr and this was also in the letter. There yep. is no accessible entrance to town hall. Because accessible entrances mean that you have an accessible code compliant passage way, path mm -hmm. yeah. to either a drop off zone or a parking space. And you do not have that here. There is no accessible path from a, an accessible parking space to that entrance. So the only yeah. solution that you have is to create a drop-off zone there. So someone can be dropped off 
and enter the town hall. So you, you're saying create a drop off zone on the north side of town hall, yes. adjacent to where the handicapped space um, or handicapped entrance, entrance is. Yes. Now, there is a 15 minute parking space there now. Yeah, but that's but too steep. That is too steep. So it would have to be. It would have to be right in front, right before you turn into the alleyway. It'd have to be right there. I think you. I think you might be able to do it. They might have to regrade it a little bit, but it's got to be done. I mean, what would ideally be great is if they regraded that section and made a handicap van except or make at least a handicap space along Main Street. Yes, yeah. along Main yeah. Street, adjacent to the entrance. That's because right. there simply is yeah. no way you can get in. And I'd get rid of those accessible quote unquote parking spaces behind town hall because they're useless. That's right, that's right. There is absolutely no way you can get out of that parking lot that meets yeah. code. That's right. I don't know if that's part of this project, but it certainly is well overdue. And I, I think I'm hearing that Chris understands the issue um, I think it's not been our experience that other people cared to understand the issue. So I don't know how to get from here to there with that. Um, but I think it's pretty critical that that problem be solved. And I don't know because it's on Main Street and it's not part of the common. I don't know if they got if they even have funding that they could legally use to do this. Um, and fifty thousand dollars in the capital project, I don't think is going to do it. Do you, Marty? It'll go a long way to helping it. Okay. Well, maybe that's what we should suggest. But I, you know, I think you can't do this project without solving the town hall accessibility. You're yeah. fixing everything else. And so, without Marty, it might help um, to have you and me meet with the team at DPW who is working on this design. And I'm gonna suggest that and see if we can make sure. such a meeting happen. That's excellent. Yeah, thank you. We probably ought to meet at the site. Yeah, I agree. Even better, yeah. Yeah, because I think they need to be pointed out. They, the people yeah. who are doing this need to see it in person. That's right. Because they're so not they should, realizing they're yeah. not realizing how this affects people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. Um, are there any other things about this plan that um, we need to communicate? Um, how is there going to be a road between the north and south common or a pathway or something? Oh, so or is it just going to be continuous there. green? Spring, no, Street Spring, still still Spring Street is still there. Spring Street is still there. Okay. And the parking is still there. They're only going to the north edge of the Spring Street parking. Actually, okay. they're not affecting that sidewalk that goes across on the north side of Spring Street. Okay. So that's okay. I'd like to say I think this is an, a really nice plan. I okay. I think the the bisecting the common in sort of a cross, I liken it to a cross rather than a T because it mm -hmm. really almost bisects the corner to corner. And um, I think it'll it'll really be a nice um, improvement. And especially in front of Town Hall, the plaza, mm -hmm. that plaza area I think will give it a real sense of, a sense of place. Mm -hmm. You know, the- How Town big Hall is the plaza? Like, Oh, let's see. I'd say it's 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 at least uh, forty feet wide, and it's got sort of a semicircular bump off on the um, west side. So it's it's really a good forty feet wide. And what's it going to be made of? It's we think right now it's going to be made of that kind of asphalt that you can um, stamp and then color 
um, because we want something that's you know within our budget, but we also want something that looks different from an asphalt path or an asphalt roadway. So it's going to be something similar to that um, crosswalk that's in front of the library, which people seem to like. Um, stamped with some kind of a brick pattern, but we haven't exactly okay. worked on the detail yet. Does um, is there a snow and ice problem in the stamps? No, no, no. we haven't run into that. Okay, okay, that's cool. And I assume that the drainage is going to be really good. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the things that we wanted yeah. to address here was drainage. It's a very okay. difficult situation now. Yep, yep. Is, is okay. this project going to take place before that? What was it? That music booth that they were going to install on the south part of the common? I don't really know about that music shed. It seems that that has slowed down a bit. In terms I don't think of they have money. Probably. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so right now, it looks like this project is going to go ahead starting this summer, um, yeah. possibly starting in May. So, okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm glad you came to us now. Um, and, and I'm glad you heard the, the handicap, you know, and made the, made the uh, west east side sidewalk bigger and put the mm -hmm. vans there. That's great. I mean, that, those, were, um, those were great additions. And now if we can put the other van site on the other side, it's probably good. Mm -hmm. As long as we can make sure that people understand about those bikes. And I don't know, this has nothing to do with this now, but there must be a bylaw or something that has to do with e-bikes. I wonder if anybody knows if there have been any additions made to the bylaw since e-bikes. So. I don't think okay, so. Okay, we okay. We need to have. Who does that? Who comes up with that? Is that the TAC? Or um, the, it I could be the know. TAC. It could be the TAC. It could be the Sustainability Coordinator Stephanie Ciccarello, because she's really been in charge of the bike share. Um, okay. So you could approach her or the TAC about it. Tracy Zafian. Mm. Yeah. Because I think those bikes, you know, to make sure people understand the law, that we need to have a law and that we need to make sure people understand it because they are very dangerous. In terms misused. of going on the sidewalk, is that what you're talking oh, yeah. about? Yeah. 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 They're often misused mm -hmm. and they're often just left lying around to not necessarily parked in the station. Mm -hmm. So um, that's not necessarily been our experience yet, but it is experience in a lot of towns and cities that e-bikes are just like left in the street, mm -hmm. like left on That's the right. sidewalk. Yep. Mm -hmm. So they need um, to we understand it's a vehicle and it does not belong on a sidewalk at all. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Guilford is here. Um, we were just talking about, we just passed a motion about needing to replace the handicap van accessible handicap spot on the northwest corner of the common that's on that was by south pleasant street because that's the one that people really use and so we need to there has to be an a, a wider sidewalk there so people can get out of the van and i'm not sure where that van accessible site should be i think marty suggested that it should be right close to the corner but we passed a motion about that it's pretty critical we believe that you figure out how to add a van accessible spot to that part of the common. That's really been um, our main our main topic of discussion. And also, um, I guess it has nothing to do with you, but we need a bylaw about e-bikes. So we need to talk to somebody about that. But anyway, I just wondered um, if you, um, well, I think, does anyone have questions for Guilford directly about this project? I think it might make more sense to meet for me and Marty and Guilford to meet offline yep. about this issue and we will um, describe it to him and then we'll see if there's a, a reasonable solution. Okay, cool, thank you. Right. Okay, Guilford, where are we with Pomeroy as far as the design documents? What stage are we at? Do you know what the plan is? And um, I, last time we met, we had the input from the woman at the Commission for the Blind about the um, about the uh, accessible uh, rapid flashing beacons. 
And um, I think she was pretty pleased with what the original plan was. And I, I don't know if you've made, you know, where you are with that project. So if you could just give us a quick discussion, that would be great. So we added what we could of our recommendations and we're purchasing those little rapid rectangular flash and beacons. I'm not really sure how well they're going to work. Um, but that's where we are. So the project is out. Um, we've kind of started construction. We have some little things we have to finish up. Um, we're supposed to be done with it sometime next year. Um, and that's where we're going. But we did put the, the beacons in. Um, so, What's your concern about them working? Um, I'm not sure people are really going to use them. Um, and it's going to cause a problem. Um, but they put them in at the roundabout in Northampton, but there doesn't seem to be as much people actually crossing those sidewalks in Northampton at Route 9 and 91. So oh, you got to take your heart in your mouth to cross there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People not crossing there is a pretty smart move. <laughs> So, I mean, but that's all in the, that's all in the plan. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Um, oh, question about the rapid flashing beacons for, since you're here, for um, near Garcia's and around the, um, what's the name? Prey Street. Yeah, they're, they're in the works. They, um. I imagine they'll be up sometime. If the weather actually stays the way it is, it might go up before before the students come back. But otherwise, they'll be put in probably in April. Okay. And actually, one more question about the status of the repair of all of the stoplights um, since you're here. Um, oh, yeah. So what um, what's the situation with those 13 stoplights? <laughs> So I wasn't involved in any of that. Um, Maureen just came up with it based on your recommendation. And I have been trying and I did finally get the capital request from Sean Mangano. And we're trying to figure out really what the request is. Um, and then we'll go from there as far as ordering the parts. Um, there's not really a delay. Um, the delays and in, in streets, traffic signal stuff has kind of gone away. So if every, if we can figure out what's going on and we will probably be able to get most of the parts for the summer and put them in over the summer. What do you mean if they can figure out what's going on? I'm not clear what well, you're. So the, the request says, Say that again, please. I'm sorry. So the request is there are numerous, numerous audible pedestrian signals throughout the town that are either broken or inaudible. These traffic signals need to be fixed and brought into compliance. So that's all it is. There was no, there was no like analysis of which ones to do. Yeah, you've got a whole, yes, you've got a spreadsheet. Oh. It's not you in were, the request. Well, you were sent Ooh. it. In July of 2021. Wow. 21. Wow. Yes. yes. So if it ain't if it's not two months old, it's dead. It's not. Wow. <laughs> it's somewhere back in the pile. Hold on. Twenty one. Oh July yeah, of two thousand. Marty went out because we had been requesting an inventory of those lights and the conditions, and we for months for close to a year. And Marty finally went out in July of 2021 and did the inventory herself. And because she's an architect and because she's very skilled and knowledgeable about these things, she present, she wrote up a spreadsheet. She talked about each of the lights and it was sent to you. Um. <laughs> By the time you got it, it might have been August of 2021. Hey, they're inaudible for one thing. Hold on. <sighs> well, maybe if you just want to send it to me again, because 
I was hoping it was all together in the project request. Um, it's and they're. I don't think they're all going to get fixed for the price you asked that was asked for. We didn't ask for a price. We just asked that they get fixed. Yeah, yeah but, but the capital request is on, is only a certain amount of money. Safety. Who put when you're talking safety about is, they? Who is they? Um, I came Who's, from Maureen. Maureen put the request together in planning. Actually, Chris and Maureen put it together. I guess that's the name on it. This is a safety issue. It has to be done. You know, yeah. Amherst wants to do this whole thing about aging in place and making it more friendly and all that stuff. And I'm telling you, you know, people trying to cross the street who can't see a traffic light or can't hear what, you know, it, it, yeah. it has to be done, it has to be dealt with. Yeah. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of feeling unsafe crossing a freaking street as a blind person. I'm, I'm really angry. All right, I've said my bit. I'll shut up. <laughs> um, I'm really sort of uh, astounded because I know these requests were sent to you. I know we I asked you I to inventory the these. No, I, you didn't make the request. You received a request. You received a request for information about the lights. You, we, you received requests for information about when they could be repaired based on what's wrong with them. We got nothing back ever. And yeah. now, now you're saying, oh, I don't know. It's like two months, two, it's more than two months old. I don't know anything about it. I never saw this. I never saw that. They made a request. I mean, you're the implementer of these requests. And so I'm not Only really clear who the they are there. Is. If the, and the funds didn't come up until this budget was approved. So no, it was well, not done immediately because there was no funds appropriated with it. So I do have your list and I do have the funds and I got the project request now. So I will go through it. And I just sent you the report that we did two years ago. Yeah, I found the spreadsheet. Yeah, well, it's got the whole report that explains what all the nomenclature means. And of course, that's two years old, so it probably ought to be resurveyed again. Well, I know we've replaced some of the buttons in the last two years. But a lot of them don't make a sound when it the cross when you get a green light. No, they're, they're not holding up. It says wait, you know, I hear that very clearly, but I never, I often don't hear, especially if there's like a lot of traffic or, or a lot of talking and noise, you don't hear the, the audible for crossing. Mm -hmm. No, it, they don't, yeah. They need they're to be they're supposed to be audible to the center of the road. So when you, when you step off the curb, that, one that's closest to you is supposed to be audible to the center of the road. And it's supposed to be picked up by the one across the street when it's you not. get from the center of the road. So you're supposed to hear it the entire yes. time. I never and do. And that doesn't happen. Well, and so for me, um, you just said, well, they don't hold up. Um, no, they, we, it, we they need to be maintained. There is, yep. I mean, like you have a car, you maintain it. You have traffic lights, you maintain it. You have a mm -hmm. furnace, you maintain it. So it has to be maintained. And they seem to work in other places. So it's not really clear to me why the specific Amherst ones don't. Um, they don't work Not anymore. prioritized. No, they need to be prioritized. Yeah, exactly. And That's also, uh, Guilford, we don't really have any say in how the funds are used. But when there is a chunk of money that is going to be used, safety and priority issues should be at the top of the list. And we have no say in it. You know, we just know what is affecting people with disabilities. Right. I mean, I get a say, but if I don't have money, I don't have a way to do it. So if you yeah, want to make then you want to make the it, comp if you yeah. can make a comment that there needs to be more money put aside for just maintaining these, I'm fine. But a lot of the money from traffic signals gets put other places because school zones and school zone lights actually end up being the ones that get more of the money. 
Because when they break, they're almost fixed almost immediately. The Wildwood, the middle school, they don't have any lights anywhere near them. Um, Fort know. River does. Wildwood but Wildwood's does. Mm, not really. I don't see any lights there. Where's the light? There's a flashing light on Strong Street. There's two flashing lights on East Pleasant Street for Wildwood. Um, the middle school and high school do not because they until recently. They don't need them. Until recently, they weren't allowed to have them, but that's been changed. So I imagine they're going to get lights soon. Okay, but why weren't they allowed? To have them? But you know, Guilford, is there any way you can? respond to our request and say, uh, you need to go through these channels. There are no funds available at, at the present situation. Uh, and then what happens is months go by and months go by, years go by, and then it gets forgotten. So one of the other things that just come to my mind is that uh, the park, uh, I, what is the name of the park? I, Mill River. Um, Mill River. And one woman fell. And in front of our eyes, when uh, Amherst neighbors were holding their annual meeting there. And, you know, yeah, they, it's just become kind of talk. And we, we need to see some action. It the building inspector not... went there after the accident and the building inspector said that the whole thing is inaccessible and really should be yeah, shut down. And, that, and then that's it. They don't have the money for the whole thing. So they get it gets forgotten until another person falls or anyone or a man, you know, with visual impairment and an elderly person and hospitalized. Is that what we're waiting for? to raise concern. So I guess my question is, we can go around and around the block. It seems like you say, if we get, if you get money, you implement. You feel yeah. like you're only an implementer. Other people have to give you money. You don't advocate for anything. You just, you do what you're told. You don't make any decisions. Is that right? We make recommendations and a lot of stuff we recommend is cost more than our budget allows us to repair right away. If we can repair it right away, we take care of it right away. Other stuff, there needs to be more money put into it. So it's a cross, it's kind of a, a hybrid situation. Um, I'm not going to, if someone falls on a sidewalk and someone, someone then says all the sidewalks need to be repaired, um, there's not money for that and I can't do it. If someone says there's a problem with a sidewalk and it needs to be fixed in a small area, the guys will go out and fix that little piece of sidewalk. So <clears throat> that that's kind of a that's kind of how it goes. It's not that I if there's not enough money to do the whole thing, and someone says the whole thing has to be done, then it needs to get prioritized in another boat, and money needs to be put towards it. There's so been no been money yeah. put towards doing anything else at Mill River for sidewalks, parking lot either. Okay. The parking lot needs to be resurfaced. You cannot. Yep. The, you cannot walk from the handicap spaces to the sidewalks. It's not, it just needs to be redone. Okay. So, excuse so, me. Uh, um, I, I, go ahead, This Chris. is Chris. I just wanted to say I need to leave now, but I appreciate all the things that you said about the North Common, and I will relay those, and um, hopefully Thank you. we can get them resolved. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Welcome. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank okay, you. so I guess what we're hearing is somehow... We need to, I don't even know, it's not clear to me who needs to have the information about the stoplights. Well, I got the stoplight stuff and I got that. Um, well, you got it today, but you've had it for a year and a half. So um, what, what do we need to do in order to make that happen? So we'll probably take your list and go back through and do a new survey. And then we'll come up with an order for the parts supplier and we'll order the parts. Um, if you as a group want to talk to other communities and see what they're using and, and pull together the different signals they're using, I mean, our supplier is telling us they're the best that he ha has on the market, that he's supplying us with what is basically the best. He does tell us they do need to be, sometimes they need a little more maintenance than they should, but it's only every once in a while. Okay, so we need to... 
I, I, Marty, I don't know this, but it would seem to me that certain stoplights cannot be retrofitted for other kinds of sounds. They do what they do. Is that right? Um, some stoplights cannot be retrofitted because of the type of controller it is, and we have a right. few of those left. Um, mm -hmm. Beyond that, just about any one you want to put a different sound on, the button is separate from the controllers. So if there's no controller issue, you can pretty much put any type of system that they sell to make the noise and can do all that stuff on it. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, it, um, okay, so we need to find out more about stoplights. I think there are people at UMass who actually know a lot about all these stoplights and what the options are. And I have a way to find out about them, I think. Um, okay, so if you are going to buy parts for the ones that cannot be retrofitted, does that seem like the way to start, folks? And then uh, we- I do the ones we can retrofit. You do the ones we can retrofit. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then we have to figure out what we want. Some of the lights in certain places actually have information about what street you're crossing and all that. I don't know that we need that. But I I mean, sometimes they even say safe to cross or cross Main Street or whatever. You know, I've heard some of them that are too noisy um, and are too disruptive. Um, but some of them are very helpful. So, um, I guess you can make it say whatever you want. Is that right? Like no. you plan that or they put it in when you order it? It depends on the style you may, you buy. Some have preset messages, other have messages you can program in. It depends um, on what you're buying. It would probably be good if you would come back and let us know what the options are that you are able to get. And at the same time that we find out what would work well. The cuckoos don't work so well. Um, but I think if you could come to us and say, okay, this, or send us information from your stoplight catalogs that, that, that show us what the options are that you could get, that would be helpful, I think. What do you Agreed. think, folks? Yes, yeah. I like yeah. that idea. I agree. So do you have, I mean, you could even send us links if you can't, you know, copy and paste, you could send us links to what you think we could logically afford um, <laughs> if we had reasonable money um, or what you could put into our existing stoplights without much of an expense. So I think that that would be really important for us to have. Um, and I'm glad you're here and I'm glad we finally have some communication, direct communication on this issue. Yeah. Hey, I'd like to bad. know what's going in at Pomeroy. What's Have going you got in those ordered? Nah, we thought we did, but now we haven't. Okay. So what's going to what's going to go in is a, a RRF, RRFB, which will have the same beeping, so that you can locate the button, mm -hmm. and then it'll have a button that you push. It'll say wait, supposedly, and then when they start flashing, it'll say the lights are flashing. Okay. Because it doesn't oh. stop traffic, so it can't tell you to walk. Ah, uh, okay. Hmm. It's not. It's not a stoplight. Okay. So that's why it is, and then they talk to each other, but it'll only activate on one road at a time. So if you're crossing the south side of West Street, and you push that button to cross to the across that part of the road. Those two lights will light up for the northbound and southbound traffic on West Street that are on that side of the intersection. And then when you work as you work your way around, you'll have to push other buttons. So it's not yeah, going to expect that. Oh yeah, no, we know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that we calls. expect. Okay. Yeah. 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 Myra. Yes. Uh, I don't think our committee has to be involved with the financing of projects. These are not no. big projects that we are saying. We just want fixes. 
to the Actually, thing. I'm Marty? sorry. I have to say, I disagree a little bit. I think that we ought to be advocating for more funding. I think that's mm -hmm. one of our best roles is a funding advocacy. So like if Guilford needs more money to fix these things, then this is the committee that should be advocating for additional funds. Right. And explaining mm. why it is so important because it is a liability to the town if someone gets hurt. Yeah. Is this joint capital planning or is this regular old maintenance for your budget? Most most of the big big changes are coming out of capital, and the rest is out of the regular budget. So you have a, a budget line that has to do with traffic signals. I do, and it has four thousand dollars in it for. Oh my God. <laughs> wow, that's you can't call money. in a technician for that. Oh Whoa. my God! <laughs> well, yeah. there it therein lies there the rub, is. folks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who put I that have my money I have, in that category. <laughs> I'd like to know. I have. I do have my own people. Well, I did have them. Um, we have our own staff that does maintenance on them. Um, so that doesn't isn't part of the budget. And it, but there's four thousand for equipment maintenance. And then for supplies, it's another three thousand dollars. Okay, so how much money do you need? Do you think? <laughs> well, <laughs> multiply by ten. I mean, what do you yeah. think we need to advocate for? Well, sometimes Myra, we... I think we Marty. ought to ask Guilford to come back and tell us what it's going to cost to to fix all of okay. those, and then let's okay. advocate for that budget. Okay. All right, I mean, we so could, could partner uh, in this. Are we allowed to ask you. you to get that information for us and bring it back to us next month? How much money do you need to fix the, the uh, accessible traffic signals so that they do what they're supposed to do? Um, well, why don't you give me two months? I'll have someone go inspect them all again. Um, and then we'll talk to our supplier and get the prices from him. If we make it in a month, we will. If not, it'll be in two months. Okay. But we really we really need this because I don't know where we are in the budget. I mean, March is enough time, I suppose, for us to have some impact on the budget. But yeah. I think at some point we need to talk about a placeholder in the budget for this because $4,000 is ludicrous. <laughs> Joke, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they probably pay more than that for a consultant to look and do the, uh, uh, you know, look at the cost of it. Wow. Okay, but I'm just asking about the where you are in the budget. When you have to, you have to have a budget plan in by when? November. Okay, so... All right, but there are, I mean, I was on the school committee. I know budgets change. I know things get moved. I know things are deleted. I know things are added. So realistically, the town budget gets voted in March, April? It, it gets voted. It's actually the final votes don't really happen now until June, usually. Okay, so but we need to talk to somebody, or you do, about how there is a need for additional funds that will be advocated for, but that they ought to anticipate it. Right? I mean, I'm not sure how else to do this because we don't want to wait till next November for the FY25 budget cycle. Right. We don't want to do that. I mean, I'll, gi I'll give you the information. I'll have it and you guys can take it and um, we can bring it back. And I mean, I was supposed to have my budget hearings today, actually, and I actually put it off to next week. Um, if you come up with the numbers that we need prior to our March meeting, but after what would be February, if you let Pamela Young know or let me know, we can have a special meeting to discuss this with you in a timely fashion. So if you need six weeks and we wouldn't meet until eight or nine weeks, then, um, you know, as quick as possible so that we can really have some impact on the budget cycle would be really good. So we will we will have an emergency meeting to deal with this topic. If you know if you can get it to us 
sooner than the March meeting. We'll see what we can do. I mean, I'll, okay. I'll, I mean, I have my, I have one person I can send out to maybe just do it and we'll go from there. Okay. That'd be great. Uh, one I more wonder... topic. One more great. topic for you while you're here, since we're out of, running out of time. Snow and ice removal. Um, oh. You said to the GOL that your people could be responsible for enforcement. Is that we just got a we got a letter like that that you had sent to them. Um, and I guess the problem with the snow and ice removal isn't particularly the bylaw itself. It's the enforcement of the bylaw. And so because right now it's a police task, according to the right, written bylaw, that doesn't seem to be the best course for so many reasons. And I guess they said something about maybe building inspector, maybe DPW. And I guess from it's a, it's an issue that's very important to us. So can you tell us how you could envision having any role in enforcement? Um, way back in the beginning, like before I got here, we actually used to actually write tickets for those violations. Um, I have the book here somewhere. I have the ticket book. So you're talking 20 years ago? Yeah. Um, and so somehow that ended up a police job after that? Well, what happened before I got here was it was DPW could write tickets, the police would write tickets, and sometimes the building inspector would write tickets depending on who saw what when. Um, and then it just kind of slowly went to just being the police doing it. So if, if people really wanted more enforcement, I mean, there's the parking people, they write tickets now, I believe, or they give warnings out and the police write tickets. Um, we could write tickets again if we, if that was so desired. Um, and building inspections could continue to write tickets. It's, um, Right now, it's only the police who usually write the tickets and the parking guys go around and give warnings. Okay, so this is like an issue for the, there's a GOL meeting next Wednesday morning, but whatever day that is, 11, 18th. Um, and I think they're probably finally going to get to this issue. Um, so I'm glad to hear you say that. Um, they might have to write that into the bylaw that the enforcement can be done by anybody. But um, I think from our perspective, as long as, um, the only other issue we ever had about it is the sidewalk isn't enough. It's the exit from the sidewalk to the street, the curb cut, the, um, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I used to be able to walk, this is a long time ago, but it's just illustrative. Sidewalk is plowed all the way to the middle school parking lot that I used to have to walk to to get to work. And it was all piled up on the sidewalk <laughs> entrance to the street. So you couldn't, you could walk on the sidewalk, but you couldn't get from the sidewalk to the street without climbing through a two foot snow drift. And, you know, so that is, that's something that was done by whoever plowed the school parking lot, but it is also done by people who have property. You know, they pile the street up, they pile the snow up in the way of the exit. And I guess that's another thing that isn't necessarily in the bylaw because it only talks about sidewalks. It doesn't talk about ramps to streets. Yeah, it doesn't talk about stops. It doesn't talk about what? I'm sorry, Gilbert. Crosswalks. Crosswalks, yeah. So, and bus stops. And bus stops, okay. Bus stops. Yeah. So we need to, yeah, bus stops is a big issue. Who's supposed to clean those? Is that? This is the great Nobody fight we that. have. PVPA? Um, <laughs> The town bylaw says the property owner is responsible for cleaning the sidewalks in front of their property. There's no special rule that says DPW cleans bus stops. There's no, and then PBTA and UMass Transit says there's none of their regulations that say they're responsible for cleaning sidewalks. And they fall back to the town rule, which says the adjacent residents supposed to clear it. Um, sometimes PBTA and UMass Transit will go out and clean them. We clean them when we do downtown cleanup. We don't do a lot outside of downtown, but when we pick up snow in the center of town, we'll clean all the buses and stops as well. So it's kind of a head hodgepodge of who does it. and Mostly it doesn't get done. Mostly it, it doesn't. It really doesn't. No. Like the, uh, the one that's closest to me on Main Street by, uh, what is it, that east of North Whitney, south east of North Whitney Street. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's not, you're not going to clean that. Nobody else does either. No, because it's not in the center of town. So we no. wouldn't. But wow. there are lots of students who live across the street in that apartment thing. And some people use the bus. All right. So this is okay. So we're going to hear from you specifically next month, hopefully at some time in late February, maybe about what uh, what we can do about the stoplights and how much it's going to cost. Yes. Right. OK. Fabulous. I'm very glad you came. Thank you. And um, learning about the four thousand dollars explains a lot. <laughs> and I'm really, really, I apologize for losing it back there. I didn't mean to come on. So, you know, it's just a hot topic, I'm, uh, but I apologize for that outburst. That's okay. There's lots of hot topics in town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I hope we'll hear from you next month, really in February. We will have an emergency meeting to deal with this as soon as you get us information. Okay. All right, thank you. Bye. Thank you. All right, thank so you. the only thing, we actually covered a lot of, of our agenda items with that. Maybe the $50,000 has to be, well, we have two possibilities for it, right? The fix the parking situation at town hall and to add somehow to the traffic light thing. How much will it cost to fix the parking thing, Marty? I regrade. don't know. What? It depends on how much they have to regrade and resurface. I I would not hazard a guess on that. It needs okay. to be engineered. Okay. Well, fifty thousand dollars we could put toward that because I think that's pretty critical, and we could put some of it or all of it or whatever toward the stoplights. So that's what we need to share. I think with joint capital planning. I don't know what other town departments have involved. Have, have in mind, um, Pamela, but these seem to be two critical projects. Myra, yes. my recommendation is to meet with the finance committee and tell them about our frustrations because we have no say. I have no idea of the money they have that they're playing with and how it should be, our needs should be prioritized because we go with the ADA regulations. And what, from our experiences, the challenges we are facing. So okay. maybe we should recommend, they might just say, okay, so maybe they should create a new pool of money that could be used for any immediate access needs even from the new ones or to fix the existing ones so i think we should okay, know that good idea i don't feel comfortable with making decisions of this is going to cost this much should we spend that money on this project or this project because we know so little about the finances of the town and yeah i'll tell you there is for no money a long time <laughs> i have no idea Okay, so Pamela, can you, I don't even know, Pat, Pat isn't here today, right? Um, can you, I don't know who the finance committee people are from the town council. I don't even know who's in charge of it. So I um, can um, send you the information about the finance committee. And it. Uh, I think that it just dawned on me when you mentioned Pat DeAngelis that, uh, that Angela and I did not send her the link to join this meeting where I'm still trying to get all the protocol. Uh, so I will take responsibility for that. Don't. I don't think she. Pam, don't. Yeah, because no. She, she, she knows when we meet. Out. She, okay. she yeah. sent a note out saying that she, knows she when had we an meet. appointment today and that okay. she couldn't make it. And she's also not going to oh. be here for the next month or so. OK. All right. Oh, I didn't yeah. get that. Yeah. OK. I so, did. No, yeah. she's got a lot on her plate. Yeah, yeah. she's got a lot of things going on. So. Don't. Oh, it's not okay. your fault, Pamela. All right. Well, I feel and good about I that. Didn't even, yeah. I didn't even get that. So I didn't know. Yeah. Wow. So um, I I do, unfortunately, have to uh, 
uh, leave for another meeting. Yeah. Uh, but I yeah. want to, before I do that, I want to go over my to-do list, which um, includes checking on a few things. So one is the accessibility of the packet. And I, I mean, Maureen has been gracious enough to say that I could reach out to her to ask questions. So I will ask her what we did differently, we meaning Angela and I, than how she posted information. Because we, uh, Angela and I did assume that the way in which we posted everything, it would be accessible. So I, I need to check on that. I also need to get you minutes from this meeting and the prior meeting, because <laughs> you haven't had any minutes. Um, right. And um, so those are the two things on my to-do list, to check on the accessibility of the information. I'm not sure, Myra, why your link didn't work because it did work for Elise and for Marty. Um, um, but, uh, you know, I'll, I'll double the check. Link. Okay, for the I meeting. think it possibly didn't work because Tori asked me to send the, her the link. And at the bottom of the page, it says, do not share this link. And it's possible that she couldn't get in with my link because she wasn't me. And I couldn't get in with my link because I had already given it to her. It is possible. Yeah, I, I'm not so certain, but I don't I, know. I don't know how to what what the protocol is, but Tori couldn't get in and I couldn't get in. And it was all about the same link. Right. right. <laughs> so I don't know. I have to go, actually. So I'm yep, going to be. I think we all do. Yeah. I think we just need to follow yeah. up with Guilford to make sure that he's um, be, going to be able to bring us what we need. Um, and I think um, we need to. Well, Marty and Chris and Guilford are going to meet. And I think we learned a lot today that we can't really talk about right, right. <laughs> in a public meeting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh okay. make a motion to to uh suspend yeah adjourn adjourn yes <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay marty made a motion <laughs> okay and, okay a tory or somebody seconded it okay. and uh, yeah. okay anybody opposed to adjournment no hearing no like hearing none Congress um, hearings. <laughs> See you next month. Pam, okay. you've done a great job for your first time. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. You thank have you. done a great job. <laughs> Pam, yeah. Pamela, this was quite the meeting. Um, we've not had we've not had access uh to what we had access to ever. So I think I think you saw something very interesting. Oh. I well, assume I Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for being patient with me. I will definitely oh, yeah. try to um, smooth out the rough edges. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you. Until next bye -bye. month. We're all bye -bye. laughing. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.